um, uh, anxiety is all it's um, it's it's about um, there, there, Jason. I'll take it from you. Thanks, thanks for that. Well, today we're going to tell you, uh, talk to you about how to overcome anxiety and become confident in public speaking. And I want to do a little exercise with you. So I want you to think about a time when you felt, you know, very anxious. Maybe it was a night before a big exam. Maybe it was something like meeting your know, significant others, you know, spouses, parents. I know that can be stressful and anxiety-inducing. And I want you to think back to that time. You know, you're probably nervous, you're probably sweating, it's an uncomfortable feeling. Now I want you to think about a time where you felt really calm, really at peace, at zen. Maybe it's doing something like you know, playing a sport that you love, maybe it's having dinner with friends. And what I want to tell you now is that you can go from that first state to that second state, so that even when you face you know, an anxiety-inducing situation, you can feel calm and at peace and really tackle it with confidence. And today we're going to tell you how you can achieve that. Um, so we're going to talk about the different techniques and strategies that you can apply. So first off, we're going to have Siddhant talking to you about how you can get over spotlight syndrome. Then we're going to pass it on to Brooke, who's going to tell you how you should always do your research and be prepared for these situations. Then Mattis will tell you about grounding and how you can use these techniques to feel more present in the moment. And finally, Jason will talk to you about how you can be comfortable with the uncomfortable. So without further ado, I'll pass it on to Siddharth and let him take it away. Thank you, Aniket. Um, let me start by asking you all a question. Have you ever felt the weight of the room on your shoulders you know, standing on this spot? OK, I see one hand, a few nods. OK, this is not uncommon. OK, it's a very common phenomenon known as the spotlight syndrome or the spotlight effect. It's when the speaker thinks the audience is observing him or her more uh, in a scrutinizing manner than they actually are, okay? This leads to them being self-conscious, this leads to anxiety, and can have negative consequences. How? Let me tell you a story. I was in the grade nine when I was asked to present in front of the, in front of the school assembly, um, in front of the entire school. It was going well until three-fourths of the way in, I forgot my next line. And instead of thinking about what my next line was, I started looking at the audience and thinking about what they are thinking of me, right? Or their perceptions. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm underprepared. But this thought process eventually led me to be silent for 15 seconds, you know? And it, it, it was a disaster. Eventually, I did finish my speech, but I was embarrassed throughout the day until my friend comes up to me and asks me, what's going on? And I'm like, what's going on? Were you not there in the assembly? Did you not see me fumble and embarrass the shit out of me? Right? And he says, um, it's OK. I mean, people don't really pay that much attention. And I'm like, what? And that was it, right? If people aren't paying that much attention, then there's no need to be self-conscious. There's no need to be anxious. And that is the secret. The secret to overcoming spotlight syndrome is not thinking about the audience. It's about maybe instead projecting your attention outward towards the audience, and that way you come to know that they are not really observing you as, as, as you think they are. Does it matter what you say and how you present? Yes. But does it matter to them as much as, it, as you think it matters to them? Absolutely not. So. Stop putting unnecessary pressure on yourself and go out there and deliver a great speech or a great presentation. And with that, I'll pass on the baton to my friend Brooke, who will speak about her experience of getting over anxiety. When I was in the sixth grade, like Sadat, I had a truly traumatic public speaking experience. I had to read a very dry essay in front of the entire elementary school, hundreds of people. And this was for someone who was very shy and naturally very adverse to public speaking. I was just on the stage the whole time, my hand shaking, just reading directly off the page. So it really was, was not a good experience. Now, fast forward to my college years. We were required to take a public speaking course. And by the end of the course, I gave an individual presentation and scored nearly perfect on it. So how did I manage this transformation? 
from someone who started out just innately so shy and terrified of public speaking to someone who was able to get an A in a public speaking course. What I found worked for me was to really derive confidence from my material that I'm presenting and translate that to confidence uh, as I'm talking about the material to an audience. I found that if I was really able to go and know my material inside and out, uh, not only did would I know it well and be confident about it, but it, it also caused me to become more passionate and energetic about it as well. And so that translated into a better stage pres presence while talking to it in front of others. So some related psychology that also helped me get over this was thinking about how the audience cares more about the what than the how. So what do I mean by this? The audience cares more about the new knowledge that you're giving them, and they want to be able to benefit from that new knowledge. And they care about that so much more than you giving the how, you giving a perfect presentation and delivery of the message. As long as they're still getting that core knowledge, they're going to be happy and rooting for you to succeed in your presentation. So what are some tactics that you can use to put this into practice? First, do your research. Really dive into your material and know it super well. So much so that even while you're giving your presentation, perhaps you can anticipate questions that you might get and that you'll have a response ready so that even a Q&A won't throw you off. Also, know mater your material so well so that you know a logical way to present it to your audience. That way the audience can follow along, but it also helps you as well because you won't get off track because you're following a very logical order through your presentation. And so with these tactics, I believe that you can learn to be able to transform your confidence in the material into confidence presenting the material to an audience of any size. And next, Mattis is going to talk about a tactic called grounding. Thank you, Brooke. So how many of you are familiar with grounding as an exercise? I see a couple nods, a couple hands. Grounding is an exercise used by meditation leaders and therapists to combat negative emotions like stress and anxiety. It allows you to take control of the situation that you often feel like you're out of control. Um, you do this by identifying five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. By using your five senses, you're able to be very present in the moment. So I'll give an example. I can see my professor, I can see my trusty teammate, Brooke. I can see coffee, a laptop, a desk. I can touch my hair. I can touch my jacket, my temples, my necklaces. I can hear people walking outside, the air conditioning blowing. I can hear feet tapping. I can smell coffee. I can smell creamer. And I can taste my lip gloss. By practicing grounding, you can prepare yourself for any nerve-wracking situation public speaking engagement, or perhaps an interview. Next, I will pass the baton to Jason, and hopefully he can use some of our techniques to be better prepared to speak to you. Those are some great techniques. Thank you, guys. So what happened to me back there? I start off just a little bit not so confident. Then my thoughts start racing. And then my hands got sweaty. And by the time I got here, I stutter and I completely froze. That is the detrimental compounding effect of anxiety. It's a big, loomy monster, and sometimes it's so overwhelming, we just get stuck there. How do we break this down? Well, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So next time you're getting a presentation and you start feeling nervous, work on your breathing. Breathe in. Breathe out. And when you start thinking that your thoughts are racing too fast, then you just focus on the enunciation on the words coming out of your mouth. And if you ever start shaking, then just stop, stretch, and relax. And before you know it, this big elephant is just this tiny, conquerable mouse. And you don't have to do this in the span of one presentation. Spread it out over four weeks. You start off asking a small question in your group. Then maybe in Professor Morse class, you ask another question in front of a bigger audience. And within the end of the semester, you'll be talking and giving a grand presentation at the Shell Auditorium. And I know you guys can do this. Once you practice, you will look back and wonder why did you even freeze up in the first place. So to wrap things up, I pass it on to my colleague.
Thanks, Jason. Well, it's great to see that nervous Jason has been replaced with confident Jason. So how did that happen? Well, we've talked you through how it happened. So this is something that anyone can master. It's a skill. And the, the steps are right there. So first off, make sure that you, know, you overcome that spotlight syndrome. Realize that it's not as daunting as you thought it was and you can, you can rise to it. Second, make sure that you've done your research and you know what you're talking about and you're prepared so you can't get caught off guard. Third, you know, make use of those grounding techniques. Grounding is just one technique. If something else, you know, you find that there's something that works for you, make use of that. And finally, as Jason was talking about, become comfortable with the uncomfortable. And it doesn't have to be immediate. It's, a, it's an iterative process. The more you do it, the better you get at it. It's just like us with our MBA programs. We came in as novices, well, we're still novices. We're learning as we go. And at the end of these two years, we're gonna be professionals working in industry. And that's a lot like public speaking. You start off, you know, not the best. You practice, you get feedback, you, you present in Shell Auditorium, and eventually you'll be standing right here like me and be able to deliver a speech without any nerves. So thank you.